When factoring, the first step you should always take is remove any greatest common factor. So that's the first thing you should always do. Once and only once you have removed the greatest common factor, look what is left in the parentheses. So now we're talking the parentheses. If it has two terms, it may still be factorable. I am talking about uh, a squared minus b squared. For those of you that are taking calculus next year, you can technically factor a squared plus b squared, um, but you always get complex numbers. Um, two more uh, formulas. If it's a cubed minus b cubed, it is factorable to be a minus b, a squared plus a b plus b squared. If it is a plus between them. Uh, you know the formulas I put up on the board for sine and cosine, how I change the signs, that does that too. This would be a plus, this would be a minus. So the way that um, some algebra teachers remind you how to use the formula, uh, the same as what you started with, different from what you started with, always positive. So they'll say same, different, always positive. So if you have a minus here, it's same, different, always positive. If you have a plus here, it's the same, different, always positive. So um, those formulas should be something you should take into either college prep or um, any of those uh, uh, calc, calc 1, calc 2, whatever. Um, you should know how to factor those things. Where does the I come from in the second one? Like, how do you just put that in there? So the only way to factor the, the sum of squares is normally not factorable. But because we are at the level of algebra that we are, um, it does factor as long as you throw I's in. Because it's like you're taking the square root of a negative 1 that you have implied, you know, implied in the problem. Okay. Remember, I times I, I squared is negative 1. and and it, and, it, and it does factor out because you would get a negative 1 times a negative 1 and it would factor out. So it's just a little extra piece that you can see how those things factor. Now, if it's three terms, you're going to try to unfoil it. So, uh, you know, first outer and last. There's tons of techniques. You know, you guys walk in here from a million different schools and uh, some of them do slide and divide, and some of them do guess and check, and some of them do the asterisk method or whatever. Um, three terms, unfoil. That's the main thing to think about. You can check as many different pe you know, combinations of things. Remember, the first should multiply to give you your first term. The last should multiply to give you your last terms. The inners and outers combine to make the middle. Okay. If there are four terms, um, you have to use uh, grouping. And then you should always check one more time. Okay? So that's the main rules when, when I remind uh, kids, oh, you, I probably go, went over these rules at the beginning of the year. Um, factoring is uh, super important. Um, my calculus kids, when if any of you end up taking calculus, you have to know how to factor because um, you are going to need to analyze a, a complicated function. So if we can break it down further, it's just going to make your life easier. So uh, again, uh, factoring is a super important skill uh, that you would take with you if you go up higher in math than what you're sitting in right now. Okay. So it's everybody got the little rules written down. So we've got this thing. The answers are given. I don't expect to see just answers on this page. You've got to show me something. You have all, all class period. 
you'll be able to kind of guess what the words are that, that is the answer to the joke. I don't care, show me something instead. Okay, here's what I mean. So I should just see, like number one, I should see that you have taken out that greatest common factor of five, and then I should see the steps underneath it. X plus five, X minus five. Oh my gosh, not hard, okay? Now, so always I need to see the steps for these because they're not much to it. And you might get done with this very, very quickly. Some of you are great at factoring. Some of you are not. I would like to go to one that's going to require, um, let's look at number nine. Now, to factor a greatest common factor, they all must contain the same variable or a number, a factor within a number. Do they all contain um, a number out in front? No, that front, front pay, uh, that front term does not. But do they all contain x's? Yeah. Yes. What's our lowest power of x? Two. Two. So let's take that out. Do they all contain y's? Yes. Yes. What is the lowest power we see there? One. So we can take those out. Now, technically, mathematically, you are dividing it out. So your power goes down by however much you took out. So our x's have to go down by a power of 2. Our y's have to go down by a power of 1. I can't draw, make a y today. I'm sorry. I'm having a problem. OK. So if our first x went down by 2, we are left with an x squared. We have removed the y. The 14 we haven't touched. The x has gone down by 2, so it's just one x remaining. The y has gone down by 1, so there's one y remaining. The 48, I haven't touched the, any numbers at this point. The x has gone down by 2, so the x's are gone. If we needed a one placeholder, you could put it there. Our y's have gone down by 1, so there's two of them. Now, that one there, we have to check to see if it is factorable. So let me remind you. Here's how we know that the x's and y's are making a pattern that might be factorable. Do you see how the x is 2, then the x is 1, and then the x is going away? The x is perfectly in descending order. The y's are in perfect ascending order. There are zero y powers. There's y to the first, there's y to the second. When that happens, that's telling us they might have an x here and a y here and an x here and a y here. Now, our coefficient on the x is 1, so it's really 1x in both locations. So we don't, I don't really need much of a space there. Let's talk about the signs. If the back sign is positive, look to the middle. It has to repeat in both, so there's a minus in both. And we need the factors of 48 that add up to 14. So just start writing down the factors of 48. So, you know, like 48 um, is uh, 4 times 12. 4 times 12 is 16, not 14 that we're on. So we were close, but we didn't get quite there. What about 6 and 8? Does 6 and 8 add up to 14? Yeah, 6 and 8 multiply to give you 48, but add up to 14. Now remember the rules. Always go back and check. Can I factor one more time? Now, how do you answer the little puzzle? Okay, if you go over, so our answer was x squared y, x minus 6y, and x minus 8y in any order. That's b. So number 9, where we see a number 9, you're going to put a b. I didn't get that word. Okay. <laughs> so, please, you have all period to do this. It's very quick. Each day we'll do a little bit more. And then we have just one new concept on Thursday I'll, I'll introduce to you, okay? So there you go. Work on this for the rest of class. Isn't that awesome?